What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Just Us League. I'm Dion, and I want to say thank you for watching. And if you like what you are seeing, please remember to hit the subscribe button. You are greatly appreciated. Let's go. So as long as I can remember, I've been into comic books. I read them growing up. I played with the toys and the video games based on my favorite comic book characters, and I went to see my favorite heroes on the big screen. This is something that is a very big part of my life. So today, we're going to be talking about 30 years of comic book movies starting from 1990 and going up to year 2020. Hey guys, before we get started, I just want to say that the movies that I'm using to represent the 90s section of this video are not part of any type of definitive list. I done rough data on everything. So if you feel like I missed a certain movie, whether it was praised critically or commercially, and you felt that I should have included it in the video, feel free to bring it up in the comment section. Thanks. All right, back to it. Now I know the 90s isn't the starting point for comic based films, but I do feel like the 90s was where we started to see comic book movies as a whole become a big thing. We saw many different characters grace the big screen opposed to just seeing multiple films that focused on the same two or three brands from the 60s on up to the 70s and 80s. The first film that I feel that I need to talk about is Batman Returns starring Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, Michelle Pfeiffer and directed by Tim Burton. Now the reason I chose this movie first, not only was it one of the highest rated and grossing comic book films from the 90s, but it also helped to make a strong case that these movies could have real character driven stories aimed at adults and be a hit at the box office. In fact, the only comic book film before Batman Returns that had both higher critical rating and commercial success was 1979's Superman. You don't really think you'll win, do you? Things change. Batman Returns is also hugely responsible for comic book films focusing more on superhero type characters. Of the eight comic based feature films to be released after Batman Returns, six of them are about superheroes. Another thing this movie brought forth besides a good story is the cool factor. Look at it this way. If you were to ask most people today who's cooler between Batman and Superman, I'm pretty sure most would say Batman. And that's because of this Batman. The Batman Returns Batman. This movie made Batman so much cooler than Superman. And being a kid at the time, that's really saying a lot. Batman didn't have superpowers. He couldn't fly or freeze an entire ocean with his breath. Nothing he did would look as cool as Superman outrunning a train or punching a bad guy through a building. So the cool factor had to come from other things like the villains and compelling theatrics. Meow. These things will serve as a blueprint for future comic book film templates. This film showed that if it was done right, how great a comic book movie could be. So if Batman Returns was the shining example of what to do with the superhero movie, what went wrong? According to Rotten Tomatoes, out of the six superhero comic book movies following Batman Returns, with the exclusion of 1998's Blade, which we'll talk about later, five of them were generally disliked by both fans and critics. So I guess the question is why? Well, one answer would be that everything doesn't work visually. Some things that look cool in comic books just look ridiculous in movie form. <laughs> Joy <get 'em! laughs> the first rule about a comic book movie, especially with the superhero, is it has to look cool. Take 1996's The Phantom, for example. Ladies, kindly pardon my error. Billy Zane didn't do a terrible job. He took the little he had to work with and done the best that he could, but the look of the character was one of the main detractors of the film. Another reason why these movies didn't hit the mark, the story. I mean, who knew that some people actually pay attention to the plot of the movie, right? Like Spawn or 1995's The Shadow, they were both marvels in the spectacle department, but the weak stories are what held them back, especially for Spawn. Now again, it looked amazing. 
but not only was the story weak, it also was a betrayal of Al Simmons' character. Any time that I think of this movie, the first thing that comes to mind is... Damn. Which brings me to Batman and Robin. If Batman Returns got everything right for a superhero movie, it's ironic that a film of the same brand would demonstrate the exact opposite. But that's what happened. I mean, this movie had nothing going for it. From the poor casting of Batman and his villains to the lazy shoehorning of iconic characters like Barbara Gordon. Uncle Alfred. Um, I mean Barbara Wilson to the bad story and all the extra cheese. This film was really a disgrace, but it taught movie studios a hard lesson. Not only did it get slammed critically, but it suffered at the box office, bringing in way less than the previous Batman films released in the same decade. The message was clear. You can't rely solely on big name actors and brand. You have to get the right actors to represent that brand. You can't just hide behind special effects. You have to have a good story and good characters in order to have a successful movie. Batman and Robin simply did not have any of these things. It was so bad that it would go on to put most Batman fans off of the franchise for damn near a decade. Yeesh. What turned it all around? After the fiasco that we shall no longer mention, it was time for Marvel to step up to the plate. No! They did so with David Goyer's Blade, the half-human, half-vampire anti-hero created by Marvel in the 70s. Now this character would be portrayed by Wesley Snipes, a seasoned drama action star in his own right, and believe me when I tell you, he killed the role. He made himself synonymous with the character. Due to the fact that the only other incarnation of Blade outside of the comics was a Saturday morning cartoon from the early 90s, Marvel and New Line Cinema had a free reign on how to represent the character and bring it out to the world. That's him! That's him! Get him! Fuck him up! They chose to introduce us to Blade by delivering a highly action-packed story that was very dark. I mean, very dark. The movie was gritty, and it had fast-paced fighting scenes and an R rating. <laughs> While critics didn't like Blade all that much, the fans strongly disagreed and got behind it. And that was reflected in sales all over apparently because the movie brought in almost triple the production budget. Commercial success aside, this movie got everything right from the look of the character, which later influenced the look of the comics, to having a great story that not only followed the comics but was also enjoyable even if you had no idea what was going on, if you didn't know Anything about Blade, you could still enjoy this movie. And not only was that a step in the right direction, but it also was a glimpse of what was to come for comic book movies as a whole. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. I hope that you liked it. Stay tuned for part two. And also, what was your favorite comic book movies from the 90s? What did you like? What did you love? What did you hate? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thanks.